Okay, so let's practice some more. Writing Lewis structures for covalent compounds. We're going to write the Lewis structure for H2CO. So the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out how are these atoms connected. Well, some things have different ways that you can connect them. And if I give you a problem like that on an exam, I will tell you what the central atom is so that you don't get too mixed up. Um, when we look at this, we've got two hydrogens, a carbon and an oxygen. The hydrogens have, have to be on the outside. They can't be in the middle. So um, we could have carbon and oxygen bonded together in some way. Um, and then I would not necessarily expect you to know that you should put the hydrogens on the carbon. So let's just not worry about that right now. This is the skeletal structure. Now we need to figure out how many valence electrons do we have from all of these atoms. Each hydrogen has how many valence electrons? One. One. So there are two hydrogens, and they each have one valence electron. And then we have one carbon, and a carbon has how many valence electrons? Four. It's in group four on the periodic table. And oxygen has six. I don't know why my stylus really suddenly just quit working. Six. So we add those together and we get 12. So we can distribute 12 dots on this structure, and we're trying to make everybody happy. The nice thing about Lewis structures is you can make everybody happy. Sometimes you have to share extra, but you can make everybody happy. So the carbon, um, between this carbon and hydrogen, there has to be a bond, right? So there has to be one, two electrons there. And there has to be at least a single bond here. And there has to be at least a single bond there. So that's two, four, six. Now, are the hydrogens happy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because hydrogen is happy with just a single bond. Very easy to please. Is this carbon happy? No. He's counting both of these electrons in the, each of the bonds, so he's got six. The oxygen isn't happy either. He's got two. We have six more dots we can put around. So if I put two dots here as lone pairs, then the carbon's happy. And I can put two dots here and two dots here. Now I've run out of dots. I can't put more dots in my diagram than I have valence electrons. So I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 dots. You can't create electrons. We don't have enough to make everybody happy. So we're going to take one of these lone pairs. We could take this lone pair, or we could take this lone pair and share it between these. Your question? Say that again? Doesn't carbon only need four electrons? Well, carbon wants to get eight electrons. So remember, when we're counting here, we're not counting one, two, three, four, five. We're counting these as well, because these are the bonds. Let's connect the dots and make those into, ooh, that was really fat. That's not what I wanted. So those are being shared, those are being shared, and these are being shared. The bonds are counted by both parties. I count my children, and he counts our children as his. They belong to both of us, so they belong to each of us. So this carbon, serious stylus issues. Um, this carbon counts two, four, six, eight. That's what he's trying to get, is eight valence electrons. He only brings four in, but by sharing with other atoms, he can have eight. That's why things form compounds at all. This oxygen, OK, just the finger is fine. This oxygen has two, four, six. Not happy. So what we can do is we can either take this lone pair and share some more, or we can take one of these lone pairs. What do you want to do? Oxygen or carbon? Let's take the carbon. So we're going to take those two electrons and move them.
and that then is going to be a bond. I still have 12 dots. Mm -hmm. ha. This carbon counts 2, 4, 6, 8. The oxygen counts 2, 4, 6, 8. Everybody's happy. This is a good Lewis structure. Yes? No, if you have um, double or triple bonds, then you're going to have a side that doesn't have dots. Oh, I'm talking about the bonds. So you limit it to two, one, and one? No. Okay, so that's a good question. Why doesn't the oxygen, why are the oxygen's electrons paired up? So let's, um, let's backtrack, or actually I'll just start over, over here. And I'm going to do this in a different color, so hopefully it's not confusing. Famous last words. <laughs> OK, so this is not the best way to think about Lewis structures because it doesn't work for all of them and can be confusing. But on one like this, it does work. So it's, this is a different approach. But let's look at the individual atoms and their individual um, electron, valence electrons. That's how I told you to draw them, right? Do one on a side, pair them up if you need to. So carbon has one on each side. The oxygen has two sides with one and two sides with two. OK? Now let's look at what they're going to share. Well, the hydrogen and the carbon are going to share here. And this hydrogen will share with this carbon. And the carbon will share with the oxygen. Where are the other electrons that the carbon and the oxygen are going to share? They're these guys down here. So I connect that. Well, that looks a little, a little weird, right? These electrons being on four sides of the atom does not reflect how the at electrons, sorry, the electrons being on the four sides of the atom does not reflect how the electrons are oriented around the actual atom. OK, they're not four corners or four sides. So the fact that I drew these down here does not mean that they're down there. When electrons are shared, they are going to be between the two atoms. So if these are shared, we really need to draw them between. So I'm going to erase that and put them between. I didn't leave a lot of room, but there they are in share. OK, does that help? Kind of. So this is something that um, we observe. Um, draw these guys again. When you look at the Lewis symbol for an atom, how many? Unpaired dots does hydrogen have? It's not a, not a trick question. How many? One. One? <laughs> There's only one dot, and it doesn't have a pair. Hydrogen makes one bond. How many dots by themselves on a side does carbon have? Four. They're all alone, right? Mm -hmm. Carbon makes four bonds. How many dots does the oxygen have that aren't paired up? These are, this is a pair on, on the bottom. This is a pair on the top. So we've got one on the left and one on the right. That's two. Oxygen forms two bonds. What? Let's look at nitrogen. I wasn't planning to talk about this, but hey, why not? How many valence electrons does nitrogen have? Five. One, two, three. Four, five. How many dots without pairs? Three. How many bonds does nitrogen usually make? Three. That's not a coincidence. It has its scientific meaning in something deeper that we don't want to get into, but it still helps us out. So knowing this, that carbon wants to form four bonds, can help us when we're looking at one of these structures that we're just not exactly sure how to put things together. 
here the carbon has four bonds. One, two, three, four. The double bond is two bonds together. And the oxygen has two bonds, and each of the hydrogens has one bond. There are exceptions to that, but most of the time, that's how it is. Any questions? Well, we can also write Lewis structures for polyatomic ions. Same idea. The thing we have to watch out for is the charge on the ion. The charge on the ion changes the number of electrons. If we have a negative charge, then we have to add an electron. If we have a minus 3 charge, we have to add 3 electrons. If we have a positive charge, we have to subtract an electron, okay? And then when we write the Lewis structure, we're going to put brackets around it and put the charge on the outside of the brackets. Let's do an example. Write the Lewis structure for CN minus. Okay, what's the name of that ion? Cyanide. That's cyanide. Well, it's pretty easy to figure out how those are connected. There's only two atoms. They must be connected to each other, right? So we'll write the C on one side and the N on the other. If you write the N on the left and the C on the right, that's fine. It's not any different. How many valence electrons? Well, how many valence electrons does carbon have? Four. How many does nitrogen have? Five. And it's got a negative one charge. Does that mean it has an extra electron or did it lose an electron? It has an extra. Because electrons have negative charges. To get this negative charge means there's one more electron than there are protons. We had to add an extra electron. So I'm going to go plus one. And that's going to give us ten dots that we can work with. So I'm going to start by putting two dots between carbon and nitrogen, because there has to be a bond there. So that's two. Four, six, eight, ten. Mm. Well, let's, let's make this a bond. Is the carbon happy? Does it have an octet? No. Is the nitrogen happy? Does it have an octet? No. What do we do? We share more. So I'm going to take a lone pair from this carbon and move it between, and they're going to share those electrons. Erase, redraw. So now that's, I've made a double bond. Carbon has two, four, six. Nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. Nitrogen's happy. Can we stop? No, we have to make everybody happy. We're always trying to do that in real life, and you can't. You might as well just get over it. But in Lewis structures, you can. Well, we could take maybe this lone pair and share it. So I'll erase those two electrons and put them in here. You can't add electrons. You can't take electrons away. You can only move them around once you've got your dots on there. So now carbon has 2, 4, 6, 8. Nitrogen has 2, 4, 6, 8. Hey, everybody's happy. So now we're going to put brackets around it and put a negative sign on the outside. Okay? Now, that's a little funky looking, so we can make it look nicer by copying it down now that we know what it's going to look like. Personally, I like to put my lone pairs in so it looks a little more symmetrical, so I would choose to put them out here. But exactly where you put them, as long as there's one on the carbon and one on the nitrogen, doesn't matter. But that just looks a little more elegant. Any questions? This is something that requires practice. Let's do another one. I need just, I don't know what it did. Um, write the Lewis structure for the ClO minus ion. Well, we had to put the uh, two atoms in there. Put chlorine and oxygen. Not, not any trouble figuring out how they're connected. There's only two of them. How many valence electrons does chlorine have? Seven. Seven. And how many does oxygen have? Six. Six. 
And the negative charge tells us, us to add one or subtract one? Add. add one. So then I end up with 14. So I've got 14 dots. Well, put two in there, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. I'm going to connect the dots for the bond, and I'm going to check and see, do both of the atoms have octets? Yes, they do. Oh, wow, that one was nice. Sometimes that happens. It's like, there, yeah, done. Any questions? Uh-huh. You want each atom to have eight electrons and not more. So what if we share, so if we were to share up the two bottom sets, I guess I'd get too many of them. Yeah. If we do that, now we've got two, four, six, eight. That's okay, but this one's two, four, six, eight, ten, and that's not okay. Good question. So the best way to go about it is to assume a single bond between each atom. That's the minimum. You have to have a bond or it's not part of the molecule. Then put your remaining dots around, just kind of spread them around and try to make everybody happy. On this one, we were able to do that. If you come up with too many dots, you did something wrong. You either added up your valence electrons wrong or you've got the wrong elements or the wrong number of them, there's something screwy because that's not going to happen. If you don't have enough dots, then you take the lone pairs and you make them into double bonds, triple bonds, and share more. Okay? Any questions? Of course, there has to be an exception to the octet rule. There's, there's actually several. There are some molecules that have an odd number of electrons. So if you have a molecule with an odd number of electrons, you cannot write a Lewis structure that obeys the octet rule because the octet rule is based on pairs. Each pair of electrons is a bond, and the lone pairs are pairs. And so if you have an odd number, it's just not going to work. Here's an example. Um, nitrogen monoxide. This is a molecule that exists in nature. But nitrogen has five electrons, oxygen has six valence electrons. You add those together, you get 11. And you can make one like this, but the nitrogen's not quite happy. Um, you can draw it like this with the double bond. No matter what you do, you cannot get eight around both of them. So you just draw the best you can and say, well, it violates the octet rule. We're not going to do a lot of these in Chem 3A, but I need to tell you that they exist. Another significant exception is boron. Boron is one of the little guys, right? He's element number five. He's much bigger than hydrogen and helium, who go for a duet, but he's not as big as like carbon and nitrogen and some of the other regular elements. So boron, a lot of times, will form compounds where he only has six electrons, and he seems to be okay with that. So if he's fine, we just have to leave him alone. So boron trifluoride. The fluorines will have octets, but boron is okay with just six. He has low expectations. Here, boron trihydride. The hydrogens get the duet that they want, and the boron will settle for six. It happens. Um, other exceptions are things like with larger elements, like sulfur and phosphorus. These are the group three elements and larger. And they will sometimes have more than eight electrons. And here are examples, um, sulfur hexafluoride and phosphorus pentachloride. So here, how many electrons does the sulfur have? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. The, the octet rule says you can't do that. And sulfur says, well, I don't care about the octet rule. I'm doing it. Sulfur can do that. These are called expanded octets. And there's a scientific explanation for how they do this, but we're not going to worry about it in Chem 3A. Here, in phosphorus has 10. It happens. Okay. When I ask you to draw a Lewis structure, 
it's not going to violate the octet rule. Okay? So on an exam, they're all going to obey the octet rule. I may ask you about things, like is it possible to have a molecule that violates the octet rule? Yes, it is. So there are exceptions. These do, Lewis theory does not really explain how these things happen. Lewis theory is not perfect. It doesn't describe everything. But it's a simple theory, and it's still very powerful because it works for a lot of situations. 